Uh, thank you, organizers, for giving me this opportunity to present our AST device closure step by step. And it's a real honor to present this presentation in front of expert like Krishna Kumar. I think he is the most experienced in this topic. I'll try my best to uh, do some favor on this topic. So we all know that surgical AST closure uh, for many years has been the gold standard in the management of AST, especially AST secondum. It's safe and effective with negligible mort mortality. Then why we need AST device closure? It's because of its uh, minimal invasive nature of the procedure. It's for beauty. Uh, if you do a AST device closure, there will be no scar in the chest. And ho shorter hospital stay and rap rapid recovery. This is the two cases. National football player after AST device closure can go for a, a regular game soon after the device closure. And a Serpa after AST device closure can climb the Mount Everest. And benefit of AST device closure, you can avoid cardiopulmonary bypass, avoid post-surgical pain. It's safe, simple, and effective. So this is uh, experience of ours, our center. So we started in 2007, but our uh, cases increased from 2016. And last year, we did the maximum number of cases, that is 338 in a single year. And recently, we have completed 2,000 AST device closure in our center. And uh, this is our two phase of uh, AST device closure experience from 2007 to 2015. In nine years, we did 174 cases, all under general anesthesia, under transesophageal echocardiogram guidance. And from 2016, in eight years' time, we did 1,724 cases, most under local anesthesia and most under transesophageal uh, trans thoracic echocardiogram gu guidance. We have experience with all sorts of devices, but most of our cases are done with the Amplaza device. So how AST device closure is done? I'm not going to focus on the echo evaluation and other, but proper echo evaluation to look for indication and contract disease is the most important thing. Proper echo and T to evaluate the size of the AST and transesophageal echo to evaluate the rims. As I'm an adult cardiologist, I do most of my AST device closure with uh, T uh, to evaluate the AST and its rims. So how do I do? In the OPD, I explained about the two options of uh, closure, surgical and the device. T to look for the rims and decide about the device size in the OPD setup, bring them to the cath lab for AST device closure, and AST closure is done under local anesthesia and trans guidance. So there are many ways to uh, uh, decide the AST device size, ideally de sizing the uh, with the balloon, but it at cost. It is not suitable for the country like ours because of the added cost to, his, to it. So what we do is we use simple formula. Uh, there are uh, different uh, formulas just like uh, if the AST is less than 16, you can use the same size is 17 to 32. You can add plus 2 mm. If it is more than 32, then you have to add 4. And if the limited rims, especially uh, if the aortic rim is absent or the rims are floppy, then you can add some more. So this is an example. In the four chamber view, this is the case we have done few years back. You can see the uh, floppy uh, uh, rims. And you can see the floppiness of the rim and the aortic rim is absent. So this is the bikeable view to look for IBC rim and SBC rim. And based upon this, we got the measurement is around 1.98 is 20. So we added 6 mm because the floppiness of the device, floppiness of the uh, rims. So we did this with the 26 mm device. So after we choose the ideal device size, device closure procedure starts in the cath lab, selection of the ideal delivery system based upon the device. So what we do is AST is crossed with either with the Juskin right or MPE catheter. Place the catheter tip in the left upper pulmonary vein. Place the floppy tip amplasma super stiff wire in the left upper pulmonary vein. Then you uh, introduce the amplasma delivery seat pushed over the super stiff wire into the mouth of the left uh, pulmonary vein. Then what you do is you remove the dilator and the amplasma wire. Then delivery seat is positioned in the LA just outside the left upper pulmonary vein, then device is passed to the delivery seat. And how we do is LA DIX is deployed in the LA by retracting the seat over the delivery cable. The whole system is then pulled, or pulled towards the septum. Once the LA DIX reaches the septum, the device delivery seat is peeled back over the uh, loading cable to allow the release of the 
uh, waist and the aortic and the gentle push is given to sorry then what you do is you release the device before releasing the device make sure that with the eco or te that the mm, uh, device is in place and then you release the device or, or you can do what you can do is um, this is my preferred choice what i do is after uh, ast is crossed i usually put the uh, catheter in the right upper pulmonary vein and a floppy tip super stiff wire uh, is introduced in the right upper pulmonary vein then you introduce the seat this is how you introduce and then do the device closure but there are not all ast are sim simple there are uh, difficult asts just like deficient aortic and other rims in our series we have almost 70 to 80 percent of our ast don't have aortic rim and uh, floppy and thin and endosternal septal uh, rims large ast small child with large ast and multiple ast these are the difficult one so what are the option in the difficult ast the reason for difficult uh, difficulty is that the la disc comes into ra before the device closure procedure is over so what we need to do is we need to prevent the left disc to come into ra before the right uh, disc is deployed so uh, the ideal way is device should come towards the is parallel to or or the delivery cable should be come at least 90 degree angle and in this if it comes in this manner it won't prolapse and the device closure procedure will be simplified but the thing is it won't come in this way when the uh, when the rims are absent or the rims are floppy so what you need to do is we can use the left upper pulmonary vein technique in which the left upper uh, la dix is uh, open in the left upper pulmonary vein you deploy the ra dix and you give a gentle push the left dix will come towards the is and the device closure procedure will be easy another one is right upper pulmonary vein technique for it's, it's used especially for the absent aortic rim and floppy rims in this case the la dix is deployed in the uh, right upper pulmonary vein and the ra dix will be in the ra and you just give a dental push the uh, left of uh, left dix will comes toward the is and the device closure will be easy or you can use in situ tulip bot this technique i don't use that much and greek monibus and also la roof techniques my preferred way is left upper pulmonary vein and the right upper pulmonary vein i do most of my difficult ast in that manner and we can use even use wire how it helps it helps to prevent the la dix come into ra before the ra dix is deployed this is how it done you put a uh, with a uh, under um, uh, femoral vein puncture you introduce the wire and do the uh, device closure procedure even you can use the catheter to assist or prevent the la dix to uh, to prolapse into ra this is how it is done and also balloon assisted technique this this deck technique was developed by dr bhalk dalvi from in uh, from india and uh, in normal delivery you can see in the normal delivery you have to pull the uh, la dix along with the delivery system and then, then deploy the ra ra dix and then push it but in some cases when the uh, left up uh, you can uh, anterior superior rims prolapse towards the ra what you can do is you can just push the delivery cable so that the uh, anterior superior rim will just prolapse towards the la this this can be done and sometimes we need to combine two techniques together just like in this case uh, this is the four chamber view, short axis view, the rims are floppy. So what we did is we started with the right upper pulmonary vein technique and you can see on the right side, the anterior superior rim got prolapsed towards the RA. So what I did is I just pushed it and make the uh, anterior superior rim towards the LA and in this way we can do the device closure procedure. So I'll say a uh, few of my interesting cases. This is the AST closer done in dextrocardia with Citrus inverse totalis. Uh, we have done two cases so far and uh, combine uh, BPV with a Inoi balloon and AST device closer. This we did few years back. Just like this is how it is done and follow up and also two AST closer with two device. We can 
do this type of procedures. So this is how it is done. So take home message is STD device closure is a preferred treatment option in suitable ST. Second term cases, ST device closure is safe, effective, and it is the most cosmetic option available in the treatment of AST. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Chandramoni Odhikari, for a nice and excellent presentation.